My name is Lizzie Fashing, and I'm very excited to be here with you. I'm a third year student at St. Thomas, pursuing a major in marketing management and a minor in English. During my time at St. Thomas, I've been involved with Women in Business and the American Marketing Association, for which I am currently serving as the Director of Special Events. I am also a student intern with the Donor Relations team in the Development Office here on campus. This is my third scholarship spotlight, first time at the podium, um, but each year I am overwhelmed with gratitude as I listen to stories of the generosity of our donors. You have made an impact on the lives of so many Tommies. I am especially grateful to have received the Thomas E. Hensey Endowed Scholarship and the Layla Gross Endowed Scholarship in past years. Without these gifts, I would not be standing here with you today at such an amazing university. With that, it is my pleasure to welcome you to Scholarship Spotlight, a very special opportunity to thank scholarship donors and to connect them with students like me who have received these scholarships. At this time, I'd like to introduce Father Larry Snyder, our Vice President for Mission, who will offer an invocation before our meal. Good afternoon. I hope you all enjoyed your lunch and spending time meeting each other. Before we continue with the program, I'd like to let you know that donors and students will have the opportunity to have their photos taken after the luncheon, so it'll be right over in this corner that will do that. And now we will hear from President Julie Sullivan about the impact of scholarship philanthropy at St. Thomas. Dr. Sullivan is finishing her sixth year as president at St. Thomas, and I can tell you from a student's perspective, it is clear that she is passionate about scholarship aid for students. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Julie Sullivan. Thank you, Lizzie. I am definitely passionate about scholarship aid for students. Um, well, good afternoon and welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today, uh, particularly under these uh, adverse weather conditions. <laughs> um, this is a real, an opportunity that I think is really special. Uh, I was uh, a first generation scholar, uh, first generation college student in my family. And I was fortunate enough to have scholarship support uh, throughout the time I was studying for each of my three degrees. And I remain enormously grateful for that assistance and uh, still um, reflect upon the impact it had and the ability uh, that it gave me to continue in school. As my father kept saying, you're not getting a job yet. Uh, so. So this is one of my uh, favorite events of the year because this is our opportunity to express our gratitude to our donors and to help them really truly understand the impact that they're having on the students that they support. Our students are why we are here. Everything we do is about our students. They come first. Any faculty, staff, employee, alumni of the University of St. Thomas would agree we're all about our students. And currently, nearly 40% of our students have unmet financial need. In fact, if you total up the unmet financial need of all of our students, it totals about $27 million each year. Our number one fundraising priority is to narrow this gap. And we cannot do it without you. So we are very, very grateful for the support that you're providing. The scholarships that you provide are part of a scholarship program. That scholarship program allows St. Thomas to remain strong and competitive. It allows us to make the financial aid offer that includes your scholarship that will allow a student to say, yes, I can go to my number one school, the University of St. Thomas. <laughs> yes, I can be a Tommy. And that really makes a difference. Donors, you're giving our students a chance to make their dreams come true. Students who want a world-class education, but had family circumstances that may have made it difficult for them to pursue it, at least at the University of St. Thomas. Students who, without your support, 
would not be becoming the scientists, humanitarians, business leaders and entrepreneurs, journalists, teachers, engineers, or so social, social workers that they are becoming. Students who wouldn't be leaving St. Thomas prepared to make a positive difference in the world and hopefully ready to give back to other students in some, at some future time, ready to pay it forward. So thank you so much for allowing our students to pursue their career choices, to leave here with a values-based ethical foundation, and to do so in a manner that they're not so burdened with debt that they're not able to pursue their dreams. Thank you very much. It is now my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Michael Hill. Uh, Michael is joined today by his wife, Barbara. And uh, they were sharing a story at lunch that Joe had reminded me of this morning, uh, particularly in light of our uh, weather circumstances. Um, Michael and Barbara were married in 1991. Two things about them, uh, they love baseball and they love trains. And they took a cross-country train trip in 1991. And they arrived in Minneapolis on Halloween, 1991. Some of you older folks in the room, our scholarship supporters know that that was a record snowstorm. Some of our students in the room, you'll have to ask your parents about this. <laughs> uh, but evidently the snow follows them to Minnesota. Uh, they arrived yesterday afternoon, landed fine, and in this, it was, as Michael said, it was snowing sideways by the time they got in their rental car. So uh, welcome. Welcome back to St. Paul. Welcome to Minnesota. Um, Michael grew up in St. Paul, attended the University of St. Thomas, graduated in 1965. Uh, he has enjoyed a very, very successful career at the Washington Post. Uh, they reside now in the D.C. area. And Michael is paying it forward. Uh, in honor of his parents, uh, Michael established the Pete and Etta Hill Endowed Scholarship at St. Thomas, which we're very grateful for. So please join me in welcoming Michael Hill as our featured speaker. Thank you for that very gracious introduction. And yes, if you want snow in your hometown, <laughs> just invite us over for dinner. <laughs> Dr. Sullivan, honorees, benefactors, beneficiaries, thank you and good afternoon. It's an honor to be asked to speak on this occasion, and it's an even greater honor to be among so many students who have accomplished so much during their time at St. Thomas. Congratulations to all of you. And congratulations are also in order to the many benefactors in the room who have helped these young scholars realize their dreams just as we realized our own when we were students here. A brief story to illustrate in a way my ongoing affection for St. Thomas, my interest in its future, and my appreciation for what the school did for me. Four years ago, my graduating class was having its 50th, yes, 50th, reunion here. As I walked across the campus heading for the Anderson Center, I fell in step and in conversation with a current student. As I recall, he was a biology major. I asked him what he liked about St. Thomas, and he cited the, small, the relatively small class sizes he appreciated the ready contact that he had with his professors, and he felt that he was being well prepared for his professional future. As we walked into the lobby of this building downstairs, he turned to me and asked me a question. He said, so, has the campus changed much since you were a student here? <laughs> when I finally stopped laughing, I said, my friend, 
when I was a student on this campus, this building alone was inconceivable. A few minutes later, I was in this room saying hello to classmates. One of them shook my hand and said, so, where's the other black guy? For anyone in the room who might remember him, I'm happy to tell you that Marcus Bell, the other African-American guy in my class that my classmate was referring to, is alive and well in Atlanta, Georgia. So in the space of 20 minutes, I was reminded of many things about the College of St. Thomas then and the University of St. Thomas now. Things that have changed for the better, in my opinion, and things that have remained much as they were when I was a student here. The thing that seems unchanged is the sense that this is a school that will prepare you for a professional future. And of course, St. Thomas has grown. When I was a student, it was a college, now it's a university. And locally, even nationally, it's not unusual to hear St. Thomas professors cited on newscasts as authorities in their field. And then there's the question of diversity, raised so pointedly by my classmates' greeting. Every time I sit down with a St. Thomas official or executive, I ask about diversity. And generally, we all agree that there is work to be done in that area, even as strides have been made. But in virtually every respect, St. Thomas is a more diverse place now than it was when I was here. When I, was here. I also followed the news events last year when ugly sentiments were written on a dormitory wall. Thank you, Dr. Sullivan, for bringing this campus to a halt and turning an ugly moment into a teaching moment. Thank you. Looking back, I was not a likely candidate to come to St. Thomas. I grew up in the old Rondo neighborhood of St. Paul. We were what I think we would now call a paycheck to paycheck family. When it came time to pick a college, St. Thomas, was not on my radar screen. But my high school guidance counselor changed, quietly changed my life. She began talking to me and to my parents about the College of St. Thomas. Fortunately, I was basically able to work my way through school with a summer job as a night janitor at the First National Bank. There was some scholarship aid for, aid for which I was grateful, but at that time it was actually possible to work your way through this school. I'm awfully glad that I came here. I majored in mathematics and journalism, and father with James Whalen's journalism curriculum, which was relatively new at the time, more than prepared me for a professional life in newspapering. And for me, that learning was enhanced by the Catholic context here. For five years after graduation, I worked at the Minneapolis Tribune, and in 1970, I embarked on a 33-year career as an editor and feature writer at the Washington Post. And I forged friendships here. There are fellow students who became lifelong friends, and there were professors who became friends for the rest of their lives. So when it came time for my wife Barbara and me to choose what causes individuals or institutions to support, and we are partners always in these decisions, St. Thomas was at the top of our list. We are financially comfortable, but we are not rich. So we look carefully for ways to make a difference with our donations. For instance, the National Symphony Orchestra in Washington has an incredibly long list of donors. How to make an impression in that situation. But if we send a $100 check to the New Cumberland Town Band in Pennsylvania, the president of the band calls you up to thank you and tell you how much it means to, to the organization. It also helps that the president of the New Cumberland Town Band is Barbara's cousin. <laughs> of 
For 20 years or so, Barbara has volunteered at the Equine Rescue League, an organization near our home in Northern Virginia that shelters and rehabilitates neglected and abused horses. At the Rescue League, one dollar will feed one horse for one day. In 2017, we visited Southern Africa and found a relatively new elementary school located in a remote area in Zimbabwe. This year, we are sponsoring third grade for nine-year-old Matron Impofu. The cost of his full-ride scholarship, $300 American. So when it came to St. Thomas, the question was what to do in our lifetime to help extend to a student as rich an educational experience as the one that I had here. We decided in 20, 2006 to establish a scholarship fund honoring my parents to directly benefit students. Hopefully those students might, re, might resemble me, a student who didn't feel socially connected to the school, who may have come from a neighborhood and environment where no one talked about St. Thomas, and who at first take thought that the school was out of range financially. The Pedonetta Hill Fund began modestly, but we've been persistent in adding to it and in enlarging our con contribution. It's been gratifying, it's been truly gratifying to receive messages from students telling us that the Pedonetta Hill Fund made a difference in their lives. Let me conclude with a few words about Pete and Etta Hill. They very rarely set foot on this campus, and yet who they were and how they lived coincided perfectly with the ideals of the school then and its mission now. Pete Hill was a quiet man, but he assumed responsibility for the loved ones around him. When he was a very young man, his youngest brother contracted tuberculosis. He uprooted his life in Kansas, put his brother on a train, and moved both of them to the fresh mountain air of New Mexico. Many years later, when his other brother was not faring well in post-war Ohio, he invited him to come here and live with us in St. Paul and helped him get a job at the First National Bank, where they both ran elevators. Pete Hill was good with numbers, but my math and science classes were a bit beyond his experience. But still, he gave me the best advice for dealing with those or any subjects. Study it, he told me, until you can explain it. Etta Hill who died 50 years ago this week, was an open, gracious woman. A good friend of ours referred to her as the neighborhood mother. And indeed, when I was a kid, other kids were in and out of our house all the time. And she was a natural-born teacher. There are people in town now who, if they can knit or crochet, or play a little piano, got their start from my mother. Some years ago, at a high school reunion, a woman who had been one of those children in and out of the house, I ran into her at this reunion. After a bit of catch-up chit-chat, she said to me, you know, I will never forget your mother. And I asked her what my mother had said or done to become so memorable. And she gathered herself up and she said, your mother gave me food. And then she turned around and walked away in tears. Pete Netta Hill 
were a profound gift to me. They were a great gift to family members, friends, and other children. And now, in name and in spirit, they are a gift to students at St. Thomas. Thank you. shorter than Mr. Hill. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Hill, so much for sharing your story with us. It is now my pleasure to introduce Michelle Duwangzi and Jacob Mishki, who will share their perspectives. Michelle Duwangzi is a sophomore at St. Thomas and a first-generation student from Savage, Minnesota. She is majoring in accounting and minoring in Chinese. Michelle is an active student on campus, participating in clubs and working at Tommy Central. Michelle is the recipient of the Mary and Gerald Price Endowed Scholarship. Immediately after we hear from Michelle, you'll meet Jacob. Jacob is completing his senior year at St. Thomas and is majoring in entrepreneurship with a minor in Catholic studies. Jacob is an active participant in Delta Sigma Pi um, formation and St. Paul's outreach program. He is from our hometown, St. Paul. Um, Jacob received the John and Kathleen Rooney Endowed Scholarship. We'll hear from Michelle first, and then Jacob. All right. All right, hello, my name is Michelle Duangzi, and I'm honored to speak at this year's luncheon. I'm currently a, study, a sophomore studying accounting and minoring in Chinese, and I'm from Savage, Minnesota, a city south of the river. When I was a senior in high school, I only applied to two schools, Carlson School of Business at the University of Minnesota and the University of St. Thomas. When I was waitlisted at Carlson, I knew it was a sign for me to um, attend St. Thomas. I just had the feeling. Every day, I'm glad I made that choice. It's been almost two years since I walked through those arches, and I've been tackling classes and been involved in so many clubs ever since. Before my freshman year, I was honored to be a part of the REAL program, a five-week academic and co-curricular orientation program for students who are members of groups traditionally underrepresented in higher education. My program helped me adjust from high school to college life, such as how to balance schoolwork and free time, how to get around St. Thomas, know who to ask for for help, and establish friendships. I am currently the secretary of the Hmong United Students Association and a community engagement chair at Asian, at, for the Asian Students and American Club. And I also find time to attend and support other clubs on campus. In addition, I work at two jobs, one on campus at the Tommy Shop and back at home at the Savage Hy-Vee Market Grill. Although I do commute to and from school, um, from home uh, in Savage every day, about a 40 minute drive. I feel like I live on campus because I usually don't come home later at night due to my involvement in clubs and studying late at night. When reflecting on my first two years at St. Thomas, I can pinpoint so many things I love about it. I love the student to teacher ratio. My professors actually know me. I love the beautiful campus, the friendliness of the students and staff, the proximity of the classes, and so much more. When prospective students and their parents visit the Tommy shop and ask me what I love about St. Thomas, I respond genuinely with those answers because St. Thomas has a special spot in my heart and I hope it will for them too. Before coming to St. Thomas, I knew the tuition was intimidating. However, upon being accepted, I couldn't, find it, I couldn't believe how financially supportive St. Thomas was. I was very fortunate to have received scholarships from both the university and donors like you. I am a current recipient of the Mary and Gerald Price Endowed Scholarship, and I would like to give a warm thanks to them and other donors who have made it possible for me and other students to come to St. Thomas. Thank you so much. 
Without these generous gifts, I wouldn't be a first-generation student at St. Thomas. I would be more stressed financially as I would be working more hours and struggling to balance my schedule. Now, I would like to share a short story, a short personal story of my parents and their journey to the U.S. My parents were refugees who le fled Laos when the Communist Party took over after the Vietnam War. My mom and her seven brothers and sisters were fortunate to take the last plane from Laos to Thailand. My father, on the other hand, had to escape by climbing over the mountains alone. Although they were risking their own lives, they knew the U.S. would provide a better and safer future for their family. One of my parents' goals were to allow their kids to use their shoulders as support to go above and beyond their limits. Mom and Dad, I hope I've started to achieve the goals you have set in mind, and I appreciate everything you have done for me. Finally, on behalf of all St. Thomas students, I would like to express my gratitude to all supporters of scholarships. I would like to end with a quote. I am a big fan of BTS, a well-known Korean pop boy band, and I am quoting the leader's message he expressed at the United Nations conference. Tell me your story. I want to hear your voice. I want to hear your conviction. No matter where you are, who you're, no matter who you are, where you're from, your skin color, your gender identity, just speak yourself. Find your name and find your voice. Thank you, St. Thomas, and all you generous donors for helping me find my voice. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Jacob Mischke and I have the privilege of speaking on behalf of the students here to express our gratitude to the generous donors here in attendance. I've received the John and Kathleen Rooney Scholarship and will forever be grateful for their financial contribution towards my education at the University of St. Thomas. When looking around the room we say, see a magnificent blend of students representing a vast array of majors and minors this university offers. Many students here are first-time Tommies, and some are even the first in their family to attend college, thanks to your generous donations. I myself come from a line of Tommies, beginning with my late grandfather, Herb Mischke, who blazed the trail back in 1944 when it, the school was all male and then called the College of St. Thomas. Following my grandfather was my father, Mark, who decided to attend St. Thomas only after he found out that they would be adding women to his freshman class. Ironically, my dad ended up dating a Katie, and this July, my parents will be celebrating their 38th year of marriage. And yes, their relationship was made official with the kiss under the arches. <laughs> so in the fall of 2015, I chose to carry on the family legacy by pursuing a major in entrepreneurship and a minor in Catholic studies. In light of the university's Catholic tradition, the opportunities I have had through St. Thomas have truly been a blessing from above. This past spring, I was in Rome taking courses at the Angelicum, where St. Pope John Paul II was a graduate. While abroad, I was able to soak in the beauty of Nicola Salvi's Trevi Fountain, pray in front of Michelangelo's Pieta, and venture up the historic Spanish steps to be rewarded with the spectacular view of the city. Not to mention, my friends and I made it a priority to stop for a supremely refreshing, edible piece of Italian culture known as gelato. However, the University of St. Thomas made sure that studying abroad was more than just an opportunity to sightsee. By living at the Bernardi campus in the heart of Rome, I was immersed in the language and life of a culture other than my own. On top of our studies, we took Italian courses that allowed us to dive deeper into the relationships with the locals, such as the vendors at the market who only spoke Italian. The Bernardi program also made sure we learned what it meant to be a part of a solid community. Through weekly dinners and class trips, a great deal of our time was spent together. Whether at Bernardi or right here on campus, the University of St. Thomas has served as fertile grounds for my personal and professional development. I've been given so many opportunities to grow my faith, my understanding of the world, and of different cultures. I have grown intellectually because of the professors who continually challenge me, but also invest in me as an individual. I thoroughly enjoy when Dr. Boyle invites students over for his evenings of conversation, 
and have been blessed by Dr. Dunham's willingness to serve as a mentor for my startup business. The faculty and staff here play an instrumental role in preparing students for their future careers, and it pays off as St. Thomas was recently awarded the best, or named the best in Minnesota among colleges and universities for job placement for the second year in a row. All the joys, life lessons, and invaluable relationships formed here would not have been possible without the help of scholarship donors. In the words of Winston Churchill, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Each and every donor here embodies these words through their financial contributions that provide students like me with opportunities beyond our wildest dreams. Your example of generosity has truly left a lasting impact of, uh, on us. We have witnessed firsthand the many fruits you were giving and strive to pay it forward by helping those in need. My freshman year, I myself spent a week in Haiti after seeing a flyer with a smiling Haitian boy on the shoulders of St. Thomas. With Professor Shirakman as our leader, the students spent time serving the community in poor au prince, which is one of the poorest slums in the Western Hemisphere. We delivered water, held orphans, and spent time mingling and joking around with the locals. At the end of the trip, we were exhausted, but so filled with joy that no one wanted to leave. Just the same, we hope your charity fills you with joy. As you have committed to helping students during their collegiate years, we promise to serve those around us as our way of saying thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob and Michelle. We are grateful that you are willing to share your stories with us today. To all the donors here, thank you for your generosity in supporting St. Thomas and participating in today's luncheon. I would now like to ask all students and St. Thomas faculty and staff to stand and offer a round of applause for all our generous donors. Thank you. And this will conclude our program. I have two reminders for you, donors and students. Please remember to gather for photos um, at the front of the room to that side of the stage. And for those of you who parked with us in the Anderson parking facility today, um, you'll receive parking vouchers from volunteers as you exit the hall. Thank you for attending and have a great day. <laughs>